How did I deal with homesickness? Was the cost intimidating at first and was it worth it in the end? What is the workload like? Are there clicks on the ship? How to deal with burnout from constantly traveling and being social? If this is the first video that you're ever seeing on Semester at Sea and you have no idea what this program is, Semester at Sea is a multi-country study abroad program where you live and learn on a cruise ship for four months. And throughout those four months, you travel to around 11 countries. My voyage began in Amsterdam and ended in Dubai. Every single time you dock in each port, you stay there for around five days and that is your time to travel. You don't take classes or do schoolwork but when you are back on the ship and it is a day where the ship is at sea you have classes you do homework you turn in assignments you take exams semester at sea is open to all university students from all over the world people from any major can do semester at sea and in my opinion semester at sea is the best study abroad program out there my experience with this program was so magical and I have documented my whole experience on here if you're curious on what day-to-day -day life looked like on the ship. My first question, which I feel like is a big elephant in the room, is was the cost intimidating at first and was it worth it in the end? A lot of you watching will probably know that Semester at Sea is not a cheap program. I'm pretty sure it's the most expensive study abroad program that you can do or at least that I know of. I'm going to be doing a full like cost breakdown of everything I spent on Semester at Sea, but without going into specifics yes <laughs> the cost was definitely intimidating at first but when i considered what that experience was going to be in its entirety i personally thought that it was worth it i took out some loans for semester at sea i also got a few scholarships another person had asked like is it worth going into debt for if they're in a position where they would have to take out loans to do the program as well i personally think hands down yes i sort of had this mindset of like i want to do this program and I'm gonna do whatever it takes to do it. Not everyone has the ability to take out loans or they don't feel comfortable taking out loans to do a program like this. It is a huge amount of money and I don't wanna be like insensitive to that. But when you consider all that you're getting from that experience, it sort of makes sense why it is such an expensive program. You're not only getting a full college course load, you're also paying for housing, you're paying for three meals a day, you're paying for transportation to 11 countries. I think the cost of it definitely holds some people back from doing the the program but there are so many ways to make it work in terms of scholarships in terms of student assistant jobs on the ship in terms of financial aid next question is did the classes you chose to take get transferred to UVA for your major or as extra credits my credits went towards my degree but they didn't go towards my major I am a media studies major at UVA and there are specific classes you have to take at UVA to complete that degree unfortunately they couldn't be transferred towards my major but they do count towards my degree Degree. So all 12 credits that I took on the ship count towards my 120 credits that I need to graduate. Someone also asked like what classes I took on the ship. I took international marketing, media and society, psychology, sexuality, and then global studies. Global studies is a class that every single person on the ship takes whether you are a student or a lifelong learner or a ship kid. It happens every single morning when we are at sea. A lot of times the lectures would be in relation to the country we were going to be going to next. They did a lot of cultural pre-ports. I'm realizing now that some people might not know what lifelong learners or ship kids are. Semester at sea is not just for college students so you can also be a lifelong learner which is essentially someone who wants to do semester at sea but they aren't pursuing a degree they just want to have an educational travel experience so a lot of times people who are retired will do the lifelong learner program you can also do semester at sea as a professor a bunch of different professors from around the world were on my voyage and they could bring a spouse with them or a companion or their ship kids so we had people of literally Literally all ages on the ship. I think the youngest was around three years old and at one point I think the oldest was around their 80s or 90s and then obviously you have the administrative team and the dean of students and the crew members who help with maintaining the ship not just the students on the ship. I think that's something that made the community of SAS so special was because it really felt like a big family. My next question is what year of college do you think is the smartest to go? So 
I hands down would not change like a single thing about my semester at sea experience. I think the way that everything worked out was just absolutely perfect. With that being said, sometimes I question whether or not I should have done the program as a fourth year. The reason I say that is because I feel like I came back as a completely different person from semester at sea. I came back and I wanted to form new connections with people. I wanted to be involved with new activities. I kind of was craving like moving on to the next chapter chapter in my life but I still have a year of school left like I feel like I almost outgrew the college environment because of all the growth that I went through when I was on SAS so sometimes I question if I should have done my fourth year of school but you will definitely see that people of all college years will do semester at sea a lot of gap year students do semester at sea fresh out of high school a lot of postgrad students will do it as like an additional semester after they graduated I think the program really works no matter what time you choose to do it in your college experience everyone is different but personally I think doing it your senior year might be good in terms of like the coming home adjustment process but again it's different for everyone what made you want to do SAS as opposed to a one destination study abroad program? So I have always known I wanted to study abroad. I've grown up traveling with my family. I love experiencing new cultures, but I didn't really have like one country in mind to go to. I just wanted to be able to experience as many things as I could. And I also wanted to have a strong community with me when I was studying abroad. I wanted to be able to have a strong group of people supporting me along the way. And that's definitely what you get when you're on semester at sea the community that you build on the ship is absolutely insane i honestly don't know what it would have been like traveling without like a closer group of friends i feel like it was just really nice to have that support system you get so close with those people so fast and you just start sharing such a special experience with each other so that's why i chose to do semester at sea because i wanted to see more than one place and i also wanted a strong community with me when i was abroad how does money in a country work and then they put in parentheses atms slash getting cash beforehand. So I had seen a few videos where people recommended taking out a little bit of cash of each currency for each country you were going to be going to before you left for SAS, but I was really worried that I was just gonna lose all that cash. But looking back, I honestly feel like I could have taken out maybe like 40 or $50 of each country's currency before I had left because as soon as I got to certain places, I had to be immediately like, okay, where's the ATM? Where am I getting at the money also atm like international cash withdrawal fees are ridiculous sometimes my friends and i would combat that by doing like a huge withdrawal from one person's account so we could just have like one international fee that we all split but still i think i definitely would have saved money if i had taken out cash within the states and gone to like a currency exchange place going off of that another person asked or a few people asked actually like how much money they should budget for each port the budget that I followed was saving around $500 for each country. Some people spent way more than that in each country and some people spent way less than that. I think it all depends on what your traveling style is like and whether or not you book field programs. Field programs essentially are excursions that you can book through semester at sea where they take care of the airfare, the hotels, the food, they get the tour guides, they plan everything and you just are paying them and you show up. Obviously because they're taking care of everything thing um, it's gonna be a lot more money I think some field programs end up being like two thousand dollars I only booked one field program and it was in India that one ended up being seven hundred dollars that was one of the ports where I spent like more money in comparison to others there were some ports where I spent only like three hundred dollars and obviously in India I spent like seven hundred people were warning me that India was a little bit more difficult to navigate when you are doing independent travel so I thought it would just be less stressful for me to book a field program and what was the question I'm like getting so off topic. Oh, how much money to budget? I think like a good base would be $500 for each country. When you are saving up for SAS, I say always save up more than you think you're going to need, but $500 for each country. I heard other people following that budget as well, so I feel like it's a pretty average number to go off of. My next question is how to deal with burnout from constantly traveling and being 
social. I'm so glad that someone asked this question because I had a lot of moments throughout SAS where I was just so tired. I'm an introverted person, I like my time alone, and I literally did not have any alone time throughout all of semester at sea. Sometimes I wish I had just had more time by myself just to like reflect on what was happening. Towards the end of the voyage, I developed this routine of getting up for the sunrise and just like sitting outside and journaling for a little bit before everyone else got up. And that was kind of like my alone time for the day and I'm really glad that I figured out a way to do that. I would do a lot of my homework in the union and I would just like find a corner in there that was really quiet and no one else was around to also get some alone time. If you also are introverted, I really encourage you to find some time throughout the day where you can just be on your own. There definitely are ways to like make it work but overall I did feel like I had a low social battery at times but at the same time I think it was a good way to push myself outside of my comfort zone. In terms of like travel burnout that is something that I definitely experienced and a lot of my friends experienced as well I think it's really important to take care of yourself a lot of people would like take really long naps on sea days just so that they could have some more time to sleep more time to relax more downtime I think there's definitely this pressure to like constantly be doing something on semester at sea because you want to make the most of every single moment but that obviously leads to a lot of burnout and I I definitely experienced that myself. I think also just doing YouTube contributed to that. I mean, I was doing a full college course load, traveling to new places every week, and also trying to film my entire life and like edit them all together into these aesthetic videos. I think I could have been a little bit more nice to myself and given myself some more breaks. So if any future voyagers are watching this, I just really encourage you to prioritize time with yourself, to self-reflect, and time to have some downtime and not be go, go, go all the time. My next question is, are there cliques on the ship? I feel like yes, like people definitely form their friend groups, but overall I feel like most people are still really open to traveling with whoever. People will constantly be like messaging in sea chat, oh I'm going to this place in this country, like let me know if you want to tag along. I feel like it's very easy to travel with different people in each port and I know a lot of people who did that. So there are friend groups, but I don't think that there are so closed off that like you can't talk to certain people like I think everyone in general on SAS has a really open mind in order to do something like that you have to be super open-minded so I think it's very easy to make friends and spark up conversation with people on the ship this goes into like a follow-up question which is is it easy to make friends or how did you make friends so I had messaged Massey my roommate before SAS there was a group me for outside doubles which was the cabin that we were in basically every single person in that group chat would make like a slide about themselves and then what it was like to be a roommate with them I just like scrolled through all the different people in there I just really liked her slide it was so aesthetically pleasing and she just seemed like such a genuine person so I reached out to her that way and we talked for a little bit and then we eventually decided to be roommates but we really hadn't talked like that much before we met in person we never like hopped on a FaceTime call. We honestly really didn't text each other that much before SAS. Our friendship really started when we met in person. I also had DM'd Megan, Megan Pruitt, one of the student vloggers before SAS just because I knew she was going to be the student vlogger. I also obviously have a YouTube channel so I like reached out to her. We had talked like a little bit but again nothing really extensive. Once we got on the ship we like saw each other and recognized each other and then we started talking and we like plan to get breakfast the next day before global because we discovered that we both had the same global studies time. So that's how I met Megan and her roommate Madison. I met Reagan actually when I was embarking. She was like behind me in the line before we were getting on the ship. I remember like I had gone through the line before her and I finished turning in all my paperwork and they were like all right you can go and board the ship. I didn't want to board by myself so I ended up like waiting back for her and and waiting to like go on the ship together because we had talked a little bit in line and she seemed nice so 
we ended up boarding the ship together. She ended up becoming friends with Megan and Maddie. And when they were planning stuff for Portugal, they invited me and Massey. So then we all ended up traveling together in Portugal. I met Taylor, which is sort of like the last person in our little friend group. I met her the first day like the first full day on the ship massey and i had gotten breakfast in berlin really early and she strolled in and was like hey can i sit with you guys and then we became friends started traveling together as well and that's sort of how i met everyone i remember being kind of nervous that i hadn't made that many connections with people online before we had embarked on the trip for some reason i felt like everyone was already going to be friends with each other when i showed up because they had the huge group me and the instagram page and I thought like people had been messaging and calling each other so much and the friend groups were gonna be set in stone by the time I boarded the ship but that's not what happened at all I feel like the friendships actually started to begin and grow once we boarded and everyone was able to meet each other in person if anyone here is like preparing to go on semester at sea soon I would definitely not be afraid about making friends everyone's very easy to talk to someone asked was it scary to leave um, hands down, yes. Like I said, I really didn't know anyone going into the program. I had messaged my roommate online and like a couple other people through Instagram. But when I showed up in Amsterdam before embarkation day, I did not know anyone. And I was really scared. My mom had come with me to Amsterdam and we like explored it a little bit, but she had to fly home the morning of embarkation. So there was like a couple hours when I was alone in my hotel room getting ready to leave to go to the ship. And I remember just looking out into like the Amsterdam skyline and being like what am I doing? <laughs> I don't know I just felt really unprepared I was getting really scared that I wasn't gonna make friends I was getting really scared that I was gonna be so far away from everyone from back home obviously like living on a ship being out in the middle of the ocean that was also <laughs> a bit scary going to places that I knew I was gonna have like a lot of culture shock in there was just a lot to be worried about but honestly that just goes to show how much I needed that experience I needed to step outside my comfort zone I needed to push myself to see places in the world that I had always wanted to see it was really liberating to do something that was so scary if that makes sense it just was really empowering to know that I could go overseas for four months without knowing anyone, live on a ship, go to 11 countries, and somehow walk away with the best experience of my life. Like that just made me feel so empowered is the best way to say it. If anyone's watching this and is getting really nervous to go on semester at sea, just know that that is normal. I was really nervous. I know a lot of other people were really nervous. I think it honestly would be weird if you weren't nervous. Genuinely, like it is going to be the best time of your life and even if it isn't even if it is a difficult experience for you and you hate it like at least you did something that was outside of your comfort zone at least you showed yourself that you can take leaps of faith you can do things that are scary so yeah it was scary to leave but the feeling that i had after leaving made me feel very accomplished. <laughs> Someone asked how to not get bored on the ship. I genuinely was never bored. Our longest stretch at sea was 10 days and there were some times where I got like a little bit of cabin fever but I never felt like I was bored. There was always something to do. Every single day when we were at sea we had classes all day and there also were a bunch of activities that were going on. They usually would start like around dinner time. Sometimes they would be like super big events like we had a talent show. There was a crew talent show there was a shipboard auction that raised money for future voyager scholarships but there were also like guest lecturers that came on there were cross currents where people who were lifelong learners or professors would give lectures about things that they have specialties in there were a bunch of clubs that formed there was also like movie nights I feel like they made it so that you never got bored also when you're on the ship and it's a sea day a lot of people will spend that time like preparing for the next country there was four computers in the library that had like a stable access to the internet a lot of times there'd be like a bunch of people waiting to use them at the same time but like 
my friends and I spent a lot of nights in the library just planning our next trip, booking flights, booking Airbnbs. Somebody asked, what is the workload like? I go to the University of Virginia and my classes at UVA are really challenging and that's just what I was used to. So the classes on semester at C for me were super manageable. Obviously there were moments where I had to put a lot of effort into the classes when I was writing like a final paper or preparing for a final presentation, but I never felt overwhelmed by my course load, like at all. I think the workload is different for everyone, but most professors are conscientious of the fact that this isn't like a normal college semester and you don't have that much time to be doing homework or work outside of class. They know that you're traveling to a bunch of different places because they also are traveling to a bunch of different places. And I think what I liked about the course load too was the assignments that we were submitting a lot of times related to our travel experiences also i haven't mentioned this yet i've mentioned it in a few other videos but but this is like the first video someone's seeing on semester at sea every single class on semester at sea has what's called a field class which is essentially a field trip for each of your classes i mentioned like field programs before field programs are not for your classes those are just something that you book as an extra excursion a field class is required and it's 20 percent of your grade i had three field classes you don't have a field class for global studies in my psychology sexuality class our field class was in croatia and we got to see the dubrovnik walls and hear about the history there and then we also went to what's called a living library a bunch of people from croatia basically were able to share personal stories about their life and a lot of them were related to sexuality and gender norms my field class for media and society was in greece and while we were there we went to a journal school and we also got to talk with someone who used to work for Greek media but now doesn't because of how like corrupt <laughs> Greek media has become and then for my international marketing class we had our field class in Spain and we went to an olive oil bottling company and heard about their branding and we also went to a vineyard and heard about the marketing of the vineyard so obviously very fun hands-on experiences someone asked if I had any general advice for for future voyagers. I think something that I wish someone had told me before I did SAS was to not put so much pressure on yourself. I feel like because semester at sea is such a once in a lifetime experience that not a lot of people get to do, when you actually embark on the voyage, you feel a lot of pressure to not mess it up and do everything you possibly can do every single day. It can be very easy to get burned out when you do that and you don't create space for yourself to have downtime. I would just say don't put too much pressure on yourself. This is supposed to be an enjoyable experience. It's not supposed to be something that you're getting stressed out about. I think when you are so worried about doing the experience right, you almost take yourself out of the present moment. So just enjoy your time. A bunch of people asked, did I ever get seasick? This is a question I get asked online and also in person whenever I say that I've done semester at sea. No, I never did get seasick and I really I don't know that many people who did. Most people brought Dramamine seasickness prevention pills with them. The med clinic on the ship also had like free seasickness pills that you could grab at all times throughout the voyage. And people would also bring like the sea patches that you put behind your ear that help with motion sickness. I think there was like maybe a few rumors the first few days on the ship, but I never like saw anyone getting sick and like throwing up from the ship rocking. How did I deal with homesickness. There were definitely a lot of moments on the ship where I missed people from back home. Whenever I would think about how far away I was, that's when it would like really hit me. I think the best way that I managed was just staying in touch with my family and my friends and my boyfriend as much as I could. I have made a TikTok about this where I talked about like how my boyfriend and I navigated long distance when I was on semester at sea. So go check that out if you want any advice for how to do long distance with with your partner throughout SAS, but I would communicate with my family through WhatsApp and I feel like that's how most people would communicate with people from back home because you don't need cell service, you could just use the Wi-Fi. For those of you who don't know how the Wi-Fi works on SAS, basically every single Voyager gets seven minutes of guaranteed Wi-Fi a day, which is not a lot, and the Wi-Fi is super spotty. You have the ability to purchase extra Wi-Fi and I actually ended up purchasing the medium Wi-Fi pack 
marriage because I knew that I was gonna want to be able to call my boyfriend more and my parents more and my friends and everything. A lot of people would keep in touch through their C-mail account. Your C-mail account is essentially a Gmail that you can send and receive messages from offline. So people would like message their family and everything, what they were up to over the C-mail account and then use their seven minutes of Wi-Fi to message them on WhatsApp. A lot of times they would be able to connect on a call and stay on for much longer than seven minutes. I think the seven minutes is a little bit of an arbitrary measurement because sometimes it would last like a lot longer than seven minutes and sometimes it would literally last like a minute. It really depended on the day, but I feel like most people and myself conquered homesickness by calling my family, messaging them whenever I could, and just reminding myself that this was a once in a lifetime experience and I was only gonna be gone for four months. This was really a time for me to focus on my personal growth, to figure out who I was away from everything that I have ever known my entire life. And so that definitely helped. I also journaled a lot about my feelings. I definitely recommend getting a journal if you're gonna do SAS. I would not only journal like what I was experiencing and feeling, but I would also keep little mementos like train tickets or receipts from cafes and glue them in there. But battling homesickness was hard at times, I won't lie. You can also, I forgot to mention, you can get a call card, which is something you purchase from the reception desk and that allows you to use the cabin phone, like the phone in your cabin to call people from back home. But that wasn't super popular. I really didn't hear that many people doing that on my voyage. I feel like most people kept in touch through WhatsApp and C-mail when they were on the ship and then when we were docked in each port and they had cell service, obviously they had more freedom to like send them texts and call them for longer. Next question is, do you have to attend a certain college to go on SAS? So no, so my C accepts people from all different universities. When people aren't able to get their credits transferred to their home institution, it usually is a matter of their home institution not accepting credits from semester C, not semester C allowing them to come into the program, if that makes sense. I know of a few people who actually ended up having to transfer to another university in order to go on SAS because their original school didn't accept the credits from semester at C. I was really fortunate and UVA accepted all my credits towards my degree because UVA actually used to own semester at C in like the early 2000s, fun fact. But it was a really easy process. If you're from UVA and are considering going on semester at C, basically all I had to do was meet with a study abroad advisor, let them know what I was thinking of doing. I applied through Semester at C's application, but then I also had to apply through UVA. And then when I was accepted by both Semester at C and UVA, I wrote down which classes I was considering taking and I had to get them approved by the Dean of Students for my major. Once they were approved, there were like a few online courses I took through UVA's study abroad portal and then I had to tell UVA what flights I was going to be on for leaving the states and coming back to the states. That was like about it. It was a very easy process. If anyone from UVA has like specific questions on how to get credits transferred and everything, the study abroad office was super helpful. But yeah, semester at sea accepts people from all over the world. It wasn't just American students like I said at the beginning. I knew people who were from Denmark and Egypt or the Netherlands. I had a lot of questions in relation to like packing tips and toiletries. So I brought some toiletries with me, but I actually had planned on getting like shampoo and conditioner and body wash once I got to Amsterdam because I didn't want my bag to be overweight. I honestly wish I had just brought those toiletries with me before because it was really hard to find products that I liked. If that makes sense, I remember I got a shampoo from like a grocery store in Amsterdam and I swear to God, I don't think it did anything <laughs> to my hair. Like my hair was so greasy for the first few weeks of sass because the shampoo just did not work. So if you're like particular about what products you use, I would say just bring as many toiletries as you can and then check that bag. And like with makeup and things like that, if you're particular, I would just bring like maybe a little bit extra than you, what you would need. Everyone warned me to bring so many snacks before I left and I was so confused why I was like They serve you three meals a day. Also, I didn't explain that but basically how food 
works on the ship is they serve three meals a day buffet style there are two restaurants on the ship berlin and lido there's a big debate over which restaurant's the best but i liked berlin better because it was just more cozy the biggest argument people have for lido is the fact that it has outdoor dining which is definitely beautiful but Berlin's more cozy in my opinion. And then there was snack time, which happens like every night, I think around 10 or nine, I forget the time, but they would basically just serve like all of the extra dessert and sandwiches that people didn't eat throughout lunch and dinner. So you get those meals and that snack at the end of the night, but when you're hungry in between meals, it's sort of like up to you to figure out what you want to eat. So that's why people recommend bringing a bunch of snacks. I thought I wasn't going to need that many snacks, so I didn't bring that many and I really wish I did because every time we would go into a new country I would have to like fiend for snacks and find like the grocery store that was nearest to the port and I feel like honestly I ended up spending more money on snacks than I needed to I wish I had just gone to like a Costco before to stock up they have like snack bars on the ship so there was one that was up by the pool and then there was one in the library I'm gonna try and find the price list and put it on the screen if I can find it but they sold like chips sodas iced coffees smoothies the smoothies were so good on the ship like little candy bars and stuff through there but they also had a lido grill which people would get food at for lunch and dinner if they like weren't vibing with the buffet food and they would have burgers sold there they had grilled cheese fries there was a chicken caesar salad that i really liked there's a bunch of different food options but i would definitely recommend bringing a bunch of snacks and bringing your preferred toiletries and makeup and like stocking up on those. And then in terms of clothes, I feel like a bunch of people warned me to bring a bunch of basics so that I could like pair them together a lot, but I felt like I didn't have enough clothes that were actually unique and things that I actually liked wearing, especially because I was constantly taking photos and videos in each port. I wish I had just brought more of like what I wear on a daily basis. I feel like I brought way too many sweatpants. <laughs> um, people kept saying that like people only wear sweatpants on the ship, which is true. People definitely dress down when they're on the ship and then when you're in each port, like people will dress up. But when I was on the ship, like I didn't really feel the need to wear sweatpants. I wish I had brought more like comfy everyday clothes that matched my personal style. So in terms of packing clothes, just pack whatever you wear on a normal basis. Pack whatever is going to make you feel comfortable and confident. Okay, I think I've been filming for about an hour, so I'm going to wrap this up. I think there are a few questions that I didn't get to, but they were like answered indirectly through other questions if you have any other questions please feel free to comment them down below or dm me on instagram if you don't want to comment it publicly i really hope this video was helpful again be sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already follow me on my other socials like tiktok and instagram thank you for watching until the end of the video and i will see you soon